I have to be careful with how I discuss this next topic. I really, I really don't know how to handle Juju at this point. That's how I'm going to refer to him because I don't, I, I'm not going to, there's a sort of polite thing that I, that, that I've retained where I don't say his real name, but I don't want to call him Dick because it's like playing into his character. So I'm just going to call him Juju, the cow. Juju and Vito are complicated because Juju has this narcissistic thing where he likes to pretend that he's a big Hollywood f famous guy. So anytime any drama is happening, he does the thing where he fake laughs and goes, ah, 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 ah. And then um, he just acts like it's a big show to him. So the more like offended he is, the more he puts on this shit eating grin and acts like he's Mr. Hollywood. Um, so he's been tweeting nonstop since I made fun of him about, about both, um, fuck, what's his face? Eric July. And then also he's been talking about me and how I need to totally come on his show. I'm, I would rather be fucking shot dead than end up on the dick show again. I have already said my piece about as much as I want to say to him, everything else that he can that I want to say uh, he can pick up by clips and play on this fucking show. I don't care. That's not happening. Um, I never want to be on anything that Vito is involved in. So, uh, the first thing that happened after the stream in regards to Juju and Vito is that for whatever reason, Vito posted this diatribe about how Eric July is thin skinned and that he's, only suing him because of the criticism against his comic book, which is obvious bullshit because nobody gives a fuck with this fat pedophile things. Here's this fat pedophile by the short, stubby, fat pedophile finger. And he's completely naked. And for whatever, and he appears to be living in a tent. I don't know why his house, his bed looks like a fucking tent. Um, and he's uh, decided to post fat shirtless pictures of himself for whatever reason, I guess for attention. Uh, Juju also made a tweet about how, um, oh, made a tweet to ISOM, the name of the, uh, the ministry that's suing Eric July over the trademark. And by the way, the trademark dispute is not like a full fledged lawsuit. Well, I mean, it is a lawsuit, but what they're saying is we need to go to arbitration and figure out a way that we can, that our trademark can, because here's the thing. Yes, it is a dick move to sue somebody. It's a huge pain in the balls that nobody wants to deal with. However, uh, again, I have read an entire book on trademark, copyright, patents, and shit. And the way that it works in the United States is that if you have a trademark or you have a copyright and you don't defend it, then um, it becomes less less well protected and less easy to defend in the future. So if you allow a guy to make a comic book called Isom and then somebody else makes a more egregious um, infringement on your trademark by calling theirs like, I don't know, maybe they, maybe they make a sex toy, something that the, the ministry does not want to be associated with. It's like a porn book or something like, uh, there we go, a porn mag. Someone they makes a porn mag and they call it ISOM too. And ISOM does not want their book to be, their uh, their ministry to be associated with a pornography magazine. So they take uh, the pornography magazine to court and the court says, well, there's already a comic book named ISOM. So, and you didn't sue them. So therefore, you know, you have to share your trademark with other industries and uh, in this case, a pornography magazine, which they, they don't want to do. So unfortunately, be, just because of the way that the courts work and the way that trademarks work, if you don't defend your trademark, you can lose it and shit like that can happen. So all they've done is they've, they've filed a lawsuit, but they hope to bring it to arbitration and they hope to come to an agreement where um, both parties are satisfied, which I believe um, will result in ISOM becoming a... Um, uh, getting a subtitle it'll be called isom the something something you know so the the black the black comic book or something literally anything isom the dark defender <laughs> isom the bbc literally anything it'll become a a, a a a conjoined title like that and that way the the trademark will be defended and they won't lose the name isom it just becomes a subtitled name there you go um However, it's still a pain in the ass. Eric July is upset about it. I don't blame him. Nobody likes to be sued. 
And Dick then decides to actively tweet ICE on the ministry and says, Eric July has threatened to sue me over your trademark dispute, claiming, quote, I tricked you into its into his hundreds of thousands of fans. If fans have reported all my accounts in retaliation, Patreon, Twitter, shopping sites, etc., trying to destroy my business. I hope you take his evil into account when negotiating his licensing terms. He is a bully and a nasty individual who does not represent what your mark stands for. So Juju decides, after being t called out, after being told, I am going to sue you because you are interfering with my business and you are instigating lawsuits against me, decides in his infinite wisdom to go out to Twitter and directly tell the ISA Ministries in public that um, he that you should sue him uh, because he's a bad guy. So even after all, like after the the horrible quotes in the Eric Live video that I played last stream, he's doubled down on it. And then after, there's even a specific thing in civil litigation where after you've been notified by intent to sue, um, there are certain actions that you take that become less, more, um, more serious. Like once the lawsuit has began, a lot of things that you could get away with become less excusable because you've already been notified by the intent to sue. Uh, in particular, I know in, in particular that if you destroy evidence after the intent to sue has you've been notified about the intent to file a lawsuit um the in a jury trial of that evidence the jury is instructed to interpret it the destroyed information as being as damning as they could possibly imagine so they're they're instructed by the the judge to assume that whatever is destroyed is as bad as it could possibly be for the defense um, so that's an example, just an example of how after you've been notified of a lawsuit, when you do certain things involving the the case, it can be interpreted very seriously and have long term negative repercussions for for your life. So, um, being told I intend to sue you because you're interfering with my business, and then Dick goes out of his way to interfere with his business as much as possible, uh, I think, makes him look terrible. I don't know the precise legal implications of it. I would assume that there is some though. This this is great. I don't know where this comes from. Vito posted it. And I guess he had his his artist draw it with the his comic by the way is behind on schedule. So Juju and Vito love to make fun of Eric July's comic and point out that it's behind on schedule or that they're paying too much for certain services. They love to criticize literally every single part and aspect of his operation every single day, every single episode. Um Vito himself is actually behind on schedule with his shittier, much shittier, much less um profitable comic book which has much fewer buyers so how he's fucked it up when eric july has millions and is doing about as good a job is anyone's guess so in this i guess they just hired the artist for his comic book to make a single frame as a joke and it's Vito saying the rip tards have begun reproducing at an incredible rate though they still lack basic human intelligence Intelligence, stack enough morons together and you have a viable threat. Thankfully, Agent Juju the Cow has a plan for dealing with the brain-dead creatures. So, number one, this looks racist. When you, when you start talking about black people reproducing at an incredible rate and they all have, like, automatic guns and are going, like, like, she... That seems kind of racist to me. As an expert racist, I would know. I would say that this is racist. This is like something I would make if I was trying to be as racist as possible. Then, um, for whatever reason, Juju the Cow is portrayed as, um, I guess, like Spider-Man? It looks like he's wearing a Spider-Man outfit. I think I, I think this is what's happening, is that Juju actually plans to get fucked in the ass by all of these men. He, he's setting up one of those um, black memes, with the couch meme. He's about to sexually satisfy all the riptards at once. And that way... That they will start stop causing problems for him because uh, he gets fucked in the ass in case you didn't know that But yeah, he publishes unironically and it's sort of like I mean that you know what that would be funny if you want to do a proper like juju Comic book where you have like Vito as as like you have to make it like a Sonichu parody Vito can be um, can be the Chris Chan and then Juju can just be the Sonichu and then be like, go and get fucked in the ass of the Supreme. I will. Thank you, pedophile henchman. 
and then he's off to have an adventure. He's gonna go find the seven chaos dildos, and he's gonna get he's gonna anally insert all of them and bring them back to home base. You can even have like a like a how um, B- James Bond had like. A you know the mi mi five or whatever the fuck was like behind him, and they would give him orders and stuff. You would have like an mi five type thing where a bunch of little girls are together and they're giving him instructions like Agent Juju, this are your instructions. And of course he's rounded them all up. He's kidnapped these girls and and st- and and locked them away to be his agents in this in the cuties HQ, the cutie squad. Um, back in the, the, the Hollywood Barbie dream doll mansion, all locked up there and they're kept there by eighties girl because, you know, he wasted her youth and now she's in her forties and she can't have her own kids. So she just helps him contain the cutie squad and is like her, um, his, his M what's the name of the woman that helps James Bond? Her name is just M right. It's just like called mom. This is this is my this is my fan fiction. This is how we can do a full comic book. You want to take this idea where Vito and um, Dick Masterson are like fighting crime together. You make it so that it's like a Christian Sanchu parody. Uh, parody. Juju is going to be the Sanchu hero. You have Vito backing them up, giving them emotional support, telling them what to do. And then you have the Cutie Squad and M in the in the Barbie Dreamdoll Mansion in the the HQ. The Cuties HQ giving him advice over the the you know the radio speaker. M is a dude. Oh, sorry, I've I've only watched one James Bond, and it's the one where um they play that the Skyfall song, and M is a woman in that. It, it's definitely a woman who's like the lady at the 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 headquarters in MI five. This is my thought. This is my thought. This is if I made this, if I made this, in if I crowdfunded this, I would probably make more money for it than Vito made for his shitty comic book. <laughs> to make a comic book where <laughs> Dick Masterson's running around shoving dildos up his ass and kidnapping thirteen-year-olds. <laughs> God, that would be so spiteful, and it would be really, really funny, but it's really not worth the effort, to be honest. Then he's talking, even Rakeda, by the way. I'm I'm debating how much I want to talk about Rakeda, because he sent me a private message, which was really, really weird. We had, like, a conversation, which was, like, really fucking weird, and I tried talking to him. And I really, I really don't even know what to think about Rakeda anymore. I don't know what the fuck he's doing. I don't want to be like a huge dick and just shit all over him. But I, I think he was drunk. And he just sent me a message out of nowhere. And then we had like a two hour long conversation. I was on the train. I was traveling at the time. And he's calling me, he's sending me text messages at like midnight his time. Just like complaining. Uh, he's not even complaining. Right? This is... How much do I want to say about this? I will say this because he's he's shitting he he's with Juju shitting on on the fucking side again, and he does this thing where he messages me and he complains about some shit, some random thing on the site, and then I in this case he complained to me about um how the the forum treated the black guy Drexel, and I I know a little bit about Drexel. I don't like him. I think that he is the epitome of an N-word. I think that he is everything wrong with black people, especially black men. And I think he's a fucking sex pest. Uh, I think he's a literal groomer by the literal definition of grooming. And he comes at me and he defends Drexel. And I say, like, uh, I know a bit about him. I don't like him. And I think that people are in the right to say this. And apparently he knows less than me about the drama around Drexel. And then he starts calling me autistic. He's, like, seething at me, calling me autistic. And I'm because I'm not playing along because apparently when he brought up Drexel is like a thing to defend, he's um he's talking in a roundabout way how people in the forum will create a narrative and stick to it even in the the face of facts. And he was trying to lay that out using Drexel as an example. But in this case, Drexel was a really poor example to use because number one, I know about his drama. And number two, it's real. I know, I know that it's fucking real. So, and then eventually after hammering down what he's actually trying to say, because he was going about it in this retarded roundabout way, he 
uh, suddenly lifts up and said, says that he's not complaining. His life is great. He's happy about everything in his life. The Kiwi Farms doesn't matter. He's just remarking to me as a friend how funny it is that my site is so shit and everybody on it is a fucking retard. And he's just, he's just randomly, he's just randomly sending this message to me at midnight in the shower. He says that he's in the shower. He's like, no, I'm just texting my bro at night in the shower. And I'm like, okay. It's like, it's like, um, it's like 8 a.m. here. I'm on the fucking train. I'm traveling. I got shit to do. Why are you, why are you messaging me from the shower to tell me how great your life is and how my site sucks using examples that I can absolutely fucking smack down out of your hands as being bullshit because I know that Drexel's a fucking pervert. He's a fucking loser. And you're going to bring that up to me like I'm, I'm some bad thing is happening to him with people shitting on him when he it's just the truth. That's just what he is. And I, I, I really I really I I'm more reckless now in talking about Nick because I like I try to keep people on good terms. But I think there is a thing with these people where they and I, I told him that I can't control narratives about you on the forum if that's what you're complaining about. Um, cause I think he was in the roundabout way. He was complaining about how everyone says that he went to hedonism too on the forum. Um, and he says, that's, I think his official line is that's bullshit. He didn't go to hedonism too. Or if he did, it was at a different time when the black, when the interracial swinging shit wasn't happening or some shit like that. I don't fucking know. But I tell him that there's nothing I can do to help him in changing narratives. And that's when it swings and is like, well, I'm not actually complaining about anything on the forum. I'm just like remarking to you about how shitty your site is and how funny it is that people are so stupid. And I just wanted to have a nice chat with my friend about how great my life is and how I have a six figure deal with Rumble, seven figure deal, I think is what he says. It's a seven figure deal with Rumble. And yeah, you know, everything's going great. I just wanted to talk to you about how great my life is. And I think with people like Dick and with him, it's like knowing being on good terms with me is not a hall pass to like change online narratives about you. I can't, there's literally even truthfully, there's nothing that I can say to, to people to change their minds. And I don't bother because I know if I start defending somebody um, overtly, th people have that cognitive thing where they're going to flip out and they're going to stop, you know, they're going to go out of their way to cause somebody problems. So, and I think when people find that out, they get pissed off and that's when they start doing the juju the cow thing where they're um trying to <clears throat> to call me out on fucking twitter uh juju says can someone clip Noel's video on me where he talks about being a scorned ex my statement was i specifically avoided talking about him it did not sound like a scorned ex now that's been several years i am confident that i can approach this this topic um with clean hands he says, just for the record, I like him. He says this all the time. The motherfucker does not like me. I make fun of him fucking constantly. There's not a single thing about, about me that Dick Masterson or Juju the Cow would ever possibly defend. He hates my site. He hates my work. He hates my podcast. Uh, he doesn't like having me on. It's uh, the only reason why he invites me on is to get into a shit flinging contest with his pedophile henchman. And he does not like me, but he always says, ha, 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 I'm in on the joke. I'm in on the joke. I'm the funny man from Hollywood. I'm in on the joke. I like everybody involved. I'm so fucking impartial and above it all. I get fucked in the ass by my, by, uh, in swinging contests. I, I failed to set up threesomes with a BPD woman. I fucked over my girlfriend's entire life. Ha, 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 ha. I like Noel. And then Rikita just says, cope, seethe. And then Dix, uh, Juju says, lol, I genuinely care about Ralph, Noel, you, Medicare. So many people have enjoyed their content. It doesn't bother me to be attacked. I put on a furry cow suit if it brings the families together. He says, look how mad you are. Dick again says, we need to get wife, Noel a wife and get him some kids. Not even joking. Dax, I do not want the kind of woman that you pull. I know you think that you're like a fucking king and you slay mad puss and you crush mad box in LA. I see you with, uh, Maddox is sloppy seconds and f trying to fuck BPD girls and getting fucked in the ass instead. Whatever kind of girl you can help me get, I don't want. Offer fucking declined. Thank you. It's just like disgusting. Like, 
just because you live in LA does not mean that you have any insights. The things that you have learned about life by being in Satan's pit do not apply to normal people. Your life experiences have no value outside of LA. What you have learned is worthless to everybody except the very narrow caliber person like fucking Vito. So he's going to try to like, how about you get kids? <laughs> how about you get a wife? How about you marry 80s girl now that you've, you've wasted her entire youth? How about it, Juju? Uh, at some point, how blown out does your asshole have to be before you put a ring on it? Like how many, how many third girls do you have to have fucking you before, before you're like, yeah, I should, I should stop acting like a man child. I mean, I'm almost 50 now. Dax started when he has one. And then Rakeda, like, playing along with it. Like, who the fuck do you people think you are? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, like, I'm surrounded by all the people that I've tried to befriend have now entered into this, like, midlife crisis where they're they were, were at a peak and when they were when they felt powerful they took strong stances against certain things that made them very attractive as people to know and then as soon as as soon as they had a little bit of trouble and the forum started criticizing them just a little bit they fucking lost it they gave up everything that they believed in and now they're just trying to coast along and keep their gravy train going and they're willing to throw everything everything that jeopardizes their easy life it has to go out the fucking window any principle any position anything is just gone i'm, I'm sick of it i'm sick of you fucking old men and their faggotry the shitty fucking cars their shitty fucking everything now it's disgusting it's like with the eff it's like i'm so disappointed in you i'm so disappointed in you people Um, it goes on and on. Okay, how many times is he mentioning me here? This is seething about Eric. If I ever met Eric July in real life, I would imagine his wife would start dry humping me instinctively going after his wife, because of course. Juju reminds everybody he lives in LA. He's never been a black guy who is a bigger pussy than Eric July Inglewood. Wow. You know, it's like... Like a Reddit post. I'm someone who lived in LA. I've seen many black people and many black dicks. And of all the black people that I've had my fun with, Eric Delight is definitely the lamest black person I've ever met. Cool, bro. Cool, Andy Dick. That's awesome. Flamenco says, fucking with Eric July isn't cool. Please make sure the hardcore psychos and internet criminals are aware of that. E.g. your fucking fans, because if you don't remember, the whole shit started over his fan, who he read the fan mail of, or supposedly his fan, but I think it's actually Vito. He read the fan of, the fan mail of, and then said, we, we contacted these people, we did this. No, now it's a hardcore internet psycho and criminal. Not him. Based on the results of the last survey, how many push-ups in a row do you think Noel from Kiwi Farms could do? Five through ten. How many push-ups do you think push-ups in a row do you think Noel from Kiwi Farms? Again, I don't even I don't know if that's like some gay fucking joke from a shitty podcast. None, not even A logs watch his podcast. So if this is some kind of like recurring joke, like the water bottle fill line that women can't figure out, like I don't get it. Sorry, bro. Let me ask again. Third tweet. How many push-ups in a row do you think Noel from Kiwi Farms could do? And this is the Ricada tweet. Vito is a uniquely funny guy. He's a good person, too. He breaks down when people bully him in interviews, but that's normal. I don't need a shield. I take on literally anyone, anytime. That's not a virtuous trait, though. It just means I'll argue with you. Yeah, you'll bring people onto your fucking show to try and farm content. You're going to have to play my clips, boy. I'm not going on your fucking show. You can remind, play, the, play the, the part of the clip where I remind people that you uh, took over a mentally handicapped girl's life and you pimped her out to her friend, to your producer, Riley, and now she does OnlyFans where she shits in her pants um, and dry humps Riley with uh, dirty crap briefs because of you, because she knew you. And then after this week of absolute fucking garbage, um... 
where Juju is really down bad. Juju and Beto look like they're going to have to be on defense. They're going to get sued. They're going to have to beg people for fucking money. Out of nowhere, out of fucking nowhere, Maddox comes back. He is, in the last three years, he has published three videos. Um, and I think those other videos were almost two years ago now. And he has decided to post a 50-minute long video about Justin Wang. Half of it is dedicated, is an actual response to the lawsuit where he sued the Stereo's Coconuts. And uh, he alleges, like, a lot of stuff. And it's just, like, out of nowhere, Maddox comes back. And the video isn't that bad. The video isn't, like terrible and embarrassing like the the you don't know what a cuck video is he does pretty well in making his point and and it's okay it's just like a standard run-of-the-mill drama video uh if he made content like this consistently he would probably do really well on youtube right now because people love videos like this but the issue is is that after coming out of a hiatus for three years to talk about the fucking lawsuit again who guess who has content now Guess, guess who now has the ability to completely ignore the fact that he's about to be sued by Eric July for um, fucking with his business uh, and and everything else? Dick. Juju now gets to sit atop this mountain of content because he can milk anything. Anything that Dick do, or that Maddox does, Juju can sit there and, and make four, four months out of content out of that. Now he has 30 minutes of primo lol suit shit to go over and you bet that it'll probably be about six months before he stops talking about this video if Maddox does absolutely nothing else so well while I was getting ready to see a nice healthy happy decline of uh Vito the Pito and Juju I now get to see them uh reinvigorate their fucking audience with Maddox content So it's, 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 it's really sad. <laughs> it's really, it's like, what is the timing of this? Like, I, I'm actually curious if, um, he saw the, the drama around Juju and then decided, oh, this is my time to strike. I'm going to really, cause it's like a really, really edited video. There's so many effects. There's so many like sources and, and things lined up. And it's the 50 minutes long. It's like, did he spend like years editing this? Because apparently the video he's, or, or, the Wang video he's going on about is several years old at this point. So it's like, did he make this years ago and then just re not release it and then waited for the day that Dick had like a bad day and then publish it thinking that this would be like the appropriate time to do this six years after the fact? I really don't know, man. I got too smug. Yeah, I did. I got too hopeful. Every time I have hope, it uh, is crushed. So, like I said, the video isn't like too too stupid. It's very it's milk toast. I'll say that it's a milk toast video. Uh, it's not. In, someone said it has a very negative reception. And it has a negative reception because of um, this part in particular, I think. But besides that, it's like a very milk toast video. He did okay with it, surprisingly. So by now, you're probably wondering why did I have to take this person to court? I took him to court for fraud. This is a screenshot of an advertisement he purchased claiming to represent me and my company. He fraudulently published these false and misleading claims and targeted them directly at me and my fans. He boasted about his harassment campaign on a website called Kiwi Farms, which is a forum dedicated to stalking, doxing, and harassment. Asterios, a guy who calls himself the good boy of comedy, regularly posted on the forums where they doxed my home address and had some choice words to say about me. Why would the good boy of comedy be posting on a hate site like this? That's weird. <sighs> you know what's funny is during the lawsuit, I reached out to Maddox like two or three times. And I said, like, I really want to know your side of the story. I, I desperately, I just, because even when I was like friendly with Dick, I really wanted to hear the other side. I thought, I thought it was bizarre that Maddox would remain completely silent and just have like everything taken from him, allow his career to be destroyed, allow his friends to be pulled from him, allow uh, Juju to make a, an, a lot of money 
by talking about the lawsuit? Well, he talked about it none at all. The only thing that I've ever heard, this is true. The only thing I've ever heard in regards to Maddox and his lawsuit that was from his side was a long time ago. I, there was a guy that would call in to my, um, to my podcast when I still did call in. So this is how long ago it was. And it was the narrator. The narrator is like super popular with like homosexuals on YouTube. And I think now he tries to pretend that he didn't know me at all, but he did. And he listened to the podcast and he called in at one point and actually he called me in private and I talked to him and he outlined that he, cause he, he was sympathetic to Maddox. He refused to say anything bad about him. I, I pressed him. I said, what the fuck has happened with you and Maddox that you refuse to like join in on this? And so we had a, a talk and he outlined to me how Maddox took him in private and just, and laid out his lawsuit and showed him all the things that, Asterios and, and Juju had done to try and deliberately fuck with him and to get his uh, friends in LA to not talk to him, to get him booted out of comedy clubs and shit. And he said that he was very persuaded by the evidence that Maddox had. And uh, that's why he refused to, to join in on the anti Maddox team. I, and when I heard this, I, I desperately wanted him to talk to me. I messaged him like three times. Like, bro, I promise you, I promise you, I will give you a fair shake. This was before the Drop Kiwi Farm stuff. The site was still up on Cloudflare. My podcast was like getting started. I had just done a bunch of interviews and they're very fair. I don't feel like I was mean to anybody that I talked to. I talked to Montegraph. I talked to that uh, woman who was trying to sue me. I said, like, you can listen through these. I promise you that I will give you a fair interview. He never replied. And even now, I would, I would love to talk to Maddox and figure out, like, I mean, what his, his side was, even though it's been so long now. And he, he hates us. <laughs> the one the one group of people on the world who would probably at this point in time, because of how much they hate Juju and they hate Vito, would love to have a great excuse to to push his shit in in the way that he doesn't like to have his push his shit pushed in. Um hates us. <laughs> so it sucks. Cause I, I, I still I'm still like I'm extremely intellectually curious as to what what happened uh he goes into it in detail kind of but only about the stereos he doesn't go into anything else there's lots of questions that want to be answered everyone hates josh it's true it's so true so true king thank you for watching this clip this is the cac remember to like and subscribe